Hello, uh, this is a new uh, series on YouTube that I'm planning to start and what I'll be doing uh, over here is taking some of the questions in, in the comments and trying to answer in, 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 in these videos. And I'll try to do this once a month uh, depending on how many questions I get. Um, but my expectation is once a month or if I get more questions, maybe uh, one twice in a month. And if you have any questions regarding some of the material that is discussed, uh, do drop your questions in the comment and uh, if selected, I'll, I'll try to make a video on this. And uh, for the first video in the series, uh, the question is from YouTube user uh, Sada Ahmed uh, 4536. And this is uh, regarding a video which was the quantum chemistry calculation series. Uh, about DFT optimization and frequency calculations. So the question is, uh, can we follow the st same steps for optimizing molecules for ionic liquids? And if so, do we need uh, to do that for cation and anion separately or combined? Uh, first of all, thank you for this question. And uh, in, in this video, I'll discuss more into detail of uh, how we look at systems that do not contain one molecule it's multiple molecules so if you have a donor acceptor system or something like a cation and an ion ionic liquid how how do we uh, deal with those in uh, in dft calculations so for first let's uh, start with the structure as an example i have used uh, one ethyl three methyl imidazolium chloride and this is the structure of imidazolium chloride. Uh, this is an ionic liquid. I used Avogadro to draw the structure and draw the structure of imidazolium and place the chlorine arbitrary in, 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 this, uh, in this structure and save that as an XYZ file. And if you want to generate some structures like this, the link to Avogadro is over here. You can click on it and uh, download Avogadro and draw some molecules like this. So now you could use this structure which contains both the uh, imidazolium and chloride together because you're looking at ionic liquids. You could say I, uh, you could optimize imidazolium separately, chloride separately, but that's not ionic liquid. Ionic liquid is when you combine them together. So the first part, the answer to the first part of the question is you would need to combine those two together and then run optimizations. Uh, you may think, how do we know the position of a chloride ion, whether it's on this side uh, of the molecule or somewhere close to the ammonia, uh, the nitrogens, or maybe on the other side. So. Uh, this, as I said, was arbitrarily placed. So you can start with any geometry which you think would be experimentally observed. Or you can look into some of the literature and see where the chloride ion is. Or if you don't know, you can just uh, start with the uh, optimizations. Um, but uh, if you in want to install uh, PiCF PI for running uh, calculations, this workbook uh, tells you how to do that. So we are using the same similar code from previous uh, video that I've first referred to. And once we have installed all of this, I won't be running all the calculation over here, but I'll just go uh, over this Jupyter notebook. Uh, I load in the the XYZ file that uh, I made with Avogadro, uh, set the basis set, uh, 631G, and the system, uh, if you look at uh, as a whole, is neutral. Though the chloride ion is negatively charged, the imidazolium is positively charged, we cannot in regular DFT calculations say that uh, you should have a negative charge on chlorine. We can't do such assignments with DFT. All we do is the system on the whole, say whether it's positive or negative. And when it optimizes, you run, use all the quantum equations, you 
uh, assume that at the end of all all the DFT calculations, the charges would uh, orient themselves in a way such that your negative charge is more on the chlorine and positive charge is on the imidazolium. But you cannot assign it uh, in in a complex donor acceptor systems or salts like this. So that's the reason I said the charge, the total charge, to be zero. Uh, we use the B3 lib functional over here and I optimized it and this optimization ran for a while for a few cycles but I'll show you what the end result was and how much time it took so it took around 119 uh, 1900 seconds to run this calculation but remember that this is only one of the geometry that uh, we optimized so if you look back up, this structure, chlorine was only placed here. So when you optimize it, it's not going to move from this end to the other side of the molecule. Maybe if the chlorine was here, that was more stable structure. Uh, if the chlorine was here, it was more stable. So uh, that won't happen during optimization. What would happen is it will move somewhere in this region most of the time because it cannot move through molecules, there are atoms over here, so there are atoms over there, so it won't move across the atoms during optimization, because there'll be a barrier to pass through those atoms. So optimizations would not tell you whether this is the most stable geometry. So instead of doing optimizations, the the computational approach for dealing with such systems, donor acceptor or uh, salts, which have multiple molecules, is to run uh, single point energy calculations. So the idea is you place a molecule arbitrary somewhere and then uh, find the energy of that uh, instant of that configuration. Move the molecule somewhere, find the energy move the chloride somewhere else, find the energy. So if you do this for the entire 3D space, you'd be able to find structure which has the lowest energy. And with that lowest energy structure, you can then proceed with optimization. And uh, the, reason, well, the reason for that is, uh, one, is if you run a calculation which is single point energy, uh, which I'll show you here, so this is a single point energy calculation with the same structure. There's no optimization involved here. Uh, the charge again is set to zero. But if you look at the time it takes, it took only 50 seconds uh, compared to the other one, which took uh, close to 2000 seconds. So you could run a lot many single point energy calculations than running optimization calculations. So if you uh, place your chloride atom at different positions and one single point energy and get the uh, energy for each of those configurations and look for the configuration that has the, that, that has the lowest uh, value or the highest negative value uh, of energy. And that would be the most uh, stable configuration. For that, you can then do optimization. So that way you find the geometry that you think, uh, ge geometry that the DFT thinks is uh, is more susceptible or is more uh, likely to be observed. Uh, you may ask how do we place all the chloride atoms or some uh, different molecules at all those positions, right? So more systematically. And for that, I have a code uh, below, which I'll show you. And uh, the idea behind this is having one molecule uh, being fixed and you just move the other molecule around and just like this case you just move it turn it around and uh, look at all possible configurations by fixing one molecule and if you are able to uh, scan the entire 3d space of all the configurations uh, you can compute the energies for all those configurations and this is the process i would recommend uh, if to use is one first create the molecule and then align it along the xy plane so that the next molecule which comes in is also aligned and now you can systematically move it along x direction the y direction and the z directions so 
uh, once we have all the uh, both the molecules aligned or chloride atom chloride uh, ion in this case aligned we can then move it along any of the directions so this code below uh, will help you do that uh, the example that i've shown over here is for benzene and toluene so let's first uh, look at uh, generation of benzene so i have smiles from smiles i generate the molecule rdk molecule add hydrogens and then generate the 3d confirmer this uh, code is very much similar to uh, the one that we looked at in this quantum chemistry series uh, of generating molecules. Uh, some additional steps uh, include optimizing the molecule because we don't know how the alkyl chains or something would arrange. So what we do is some uh, molecular force field optimizations and these optimizations are not very accurate but they do give you some uh, corrections in the dihedrals and stuff so that atoms don't bump into each other and that's a little bit of uh, uh, a good starting point for energy calculations so this is how you would optimize the molecule with molecular force fields and over here we use uh, uh, mmff force field and then the second uh, the last line of the code orients the molecule in the xy plane so that we fix it in known orientations so we can change the x y and z directions so this is the first molecule uh, we do the same we can do the same thing for the second molecule in this case i told you we are looking for benzene and tol toluene and then trying to move toluene around to generate configurations you can replace toluene with some something else that you want and uh, if you want to do it for uh, the ionic liquids one of them can be the the cation the other one could be the anionic species and we can move it around so we add hydrogens optimize it once we optimize it what we need to do for the second molecule is to align uh, the xy plane uh, in the same way as the uh, the first molecule but the centers of those two molecules should coincide so that we now know how to move the molecules so you can find the center of the first molecule the centroid and then uh, doing orientation align it such a way that the centroids of these two molecules overlap and that would give us two uh, molecules which are overlapping and from this point we can translate it rotate it and generate all all the dimer configurations that you think would be needed so for translation, uh, we have a matrix, a matrix which can do the translation where x, y, z, uh, uh, how much you want to move it, how on, how much you want to translate it along x, y, and z directions. Uh, you can rotate it along x, rotate it along x direction by a certain amount y and z. And all of this code I have transformed into a function which does the translation point x, y, z's, and uh, there's an array. Uh, which converts it uh, into into those translations so there's rotation uh, and uh, the way we can do it is I said the first molecule will try to fix it and the second molecule is what will try to move so once we fix the sec first molecule the second molecule uh, we can say apply transformation from RD kit so these are RD kit uh, functions RD kit transform confirmer we have the first molecule the second molecule that get confirmer and then do a rotation along x by 30 degree we can do that and you can apply all the transformations that you want maybe you want to look at x y and z and you can put have a set of those transformations and this is just for one uh, one generating one configuration and once you have generated the configuration you can combine the first and the second molecule now so that you can get a xyz file from there and this is what the combine looks like so you have a benzene and this is rotated 30 degrees so you can see that uh, toluene a little bit rotated like that with the bonds and it's moved eight and strongs from this center over here so you can play around with this code try to rotate it and uh, that will give you the input for the uh, DFT calculations. So if you put a for loop uh, with over here and then 
systematically where we uh, if you want to translate you can translate it along x y and z maybe the 10 angstroms along x 10 angstroms along y and z and all of that can be then uh, run with a, uh, a scf calculation energy calculations and those energy calculations would give you the most stable configuration for which you can then uh, run an optimization calculation to give you the final structure uh, and that's uh, that's a little bit long uh, solution to this big uh, to this question that was there but I wanted to cover about generation of dimers and how SCF calculations or single point energy calculations are run before doing optimization for some of these uh, molecular systems which contain more than two molecules and with this uh, i would like to thank you for your attention and please do like and subscribe the videos and uh, do put in questions in in the comments uh, which i'll try to answer in videos like this see ya